I'm going to talk about an algorithm for building a linked list. Let's suppose we want to build this linked list. Here's a basic algorithm. Once we've considered this algorithm, we'll look at some pseudocode, and that will get us closer to an implementation. I'm going to start with Chloe already in place, because putting the first item into the list is relatively trivial. Once it's been inserted, the first item will have a next pointer of zero. So at the moment, start is equal to one, and next free is two. When we add Francis, we add Francis at the position given by next free. We then identify where Francis belongs in the list. Francis is not a new starting item, so we need to temporarily store Francis's preceding pointer, in other words, zero. We then set the preceding item's pointer to point to Francis. So in this case, Chloe is now pointing to item number two. And then we set the new item's pointer to the preceding item's old pointer. This means that Francis is now the last item in the list. And now we can increment next free in readiness for the next item. So here comes the next item, Beatrix. Beatrix is placed into the data array at the position given by next free, and then we identify where she belongs in the list. Now Beatrix comes before Chloe, so Beatrix is a new starting item. In which case, we set the new item's pointer to the previous start value. Beatrix's next pointer is now 1. And then we reset start to our new item, Beatrix. So Beatrix is now the new starting item. Now we can increment next free in readiness for the next item. The next item is David. We store David at position 4, as given by next free, and we identify his place in the list. David comes after Chloe. He's not the new starting item, so we temporarily store Chloe's next pointer. Then we can set Chloe's pointer to point to David, and then David to point to what Chloe used to point to, in this case, Francis. David is now in place. We can increment the next free pointer. When Edward comes along, we can place him at next free. Edward goes into the data array at position 5. We identify his place in the list. He belongs after David. Since Edward isn't a new starting node, we can store David's pointer temporarily, and then David will point to Edward. To complete the insertion, Edward will point to what David used to point to, in this case, Francis. Edward's in place. We increment next free, and finally we can insert Abigail. Abigail goes straight in at position 6. We identify her place. Now Abigail's different. Abigail is a new starting item. So we set Abigail's pointer to point to the previous starting value. The previous start used to be Beatrix. And then we can reset the start to Abigail. The new starting item is number 6. Increment next free, and we can continue adding items in this way. The principles behind the algorithm just described are fairly straightforward, but there's some other things you need to consider when turning this into a real program. So let's take a look at some pseudocode. In the algorithm, we simply said identify the new item's place in the list. But in reality, in order to add a new item to the list, we need to traverse it, in the same way we would to search for an existing item, by following a trail of pointers. Once we know our new item's correct notional position in the list, we need to do a little pointer manipulation to establish it. So here we have two separate arrays, one called data, to store the actual data items, and another array called next, which contains each item's pointer to the next item in the list. Firstly, then, we assign the new data to the next empty element of the data array, 
as given by the next free pointer. This happens unconditionally because where the new item goes in the data array really has nothing to do with its notional position in the linked list. Here we're checking to see if next free is 1. If so, we must be dealing with the very first data item, which is a special case, so it's handled separately. It's already been assigned to the first element of the data array, and, because it will point to nothing else, there's no decision to make about where it goes in the list, so we simply increment next free and exit the program. Here's the main loop which traverses the linked list by following the system of pointers in the next array. As we traverse the linked list, we're trying to determine where the new item belongs. We do this by repeatedly asking if it is smaller than the item we're currently visiting. If the new item should indeed come before the one we're currently visiting, then the new item should point to the existing item that we're visiting, no matter what. It knows what's in front of it. So here, we're assigning the value of PTR to the new item's next pointer. Here, we're checking to see if the new item is a new start item. That is, if it belongs at the very beginning of the list. If it is, we need to handle it in a different way to something that should sit in between a couple of existing items. We can establish if the new item is a new starting item by comparing PTR, which points to the current item, with the current value of start. If they are the same, we're visiting the current starting item. And since our new item belongs before the current item, we can make the new item the new starting item by assigning next free to start. With the new starting item fully in place now, the program can end. Suppose we haven't yet found the correct position for our new node. We need to start our little pointer juggling act. We need to temporarily record the preceding item's next pointer at this stage. We temporarily keep a handle of the current item before we reset PTR in order to visit the next item in the chain. So when we pass through the loop next time and find the correct place for a typical new item, that is an item which is not a new starting item, we can slot it into place by setting the new item's pointer to the current item and the preceding item's pointer to this new item. It would be well worth coding this up yourself and stepping through it carefully. The code here is almost a vb.net implementation. Give it a try. It's an excellent exercise in programming.